even if you play a counter, we saw it, Mercuro can just have that that one draw and you're just winning, especially those versions Nimsh is at the moment playing. It's pretty interesting with the Azure Drake and the Loot Hoarder. I would say he just starts with a Rogue. I would agree. I hope he plays Rogue. And we see it's Rogue. Hype. Rogue gegen Handler. Versus Handler. Gegen. Ja, das ist gut, ja. We, we saw that matchup earlier. And, well, the Handlock won. And it can absolutely win this match. I'm not favoring any of those decks in this matchup. I'm I guess fa I'm favoring Handlock. Because of all the taunts. Of all the taunts. And if he gets Twilight Drake off, that gets bounced. He gets his Mountain Giant. We had it earlier. If it really comes down to the, well, Twilight Drake Sap, Mountain Giant, no Sap anymore. Or even Sap there, but then... Twilight Drake again, Mountain Giant again. They're just coming back. You're just sapping him, and that's the one annoying thing. If you had to assassinate, you could you could get rid of him, but like this, you're really in trouble. Yes, you are, and he's still thinking about his picks. He goes in with Twilight Drake and Ancient Watcher, which isn't that surprising. And as a handlock, having the coin is always great. And not only having the coin as a handlock, but also to like to your that your opponent, which is playing the Mercury Rogue, doesn't have the coin, is super important for you as well. And the funny thing about Handlock versus Mercury Rogue is you're getting your Ancient Watcher out turn two, and then you're just hovering over your Shadow Flame. So if your opinion goes turn five, Auctioneer, Conceal, you can always Shadow Flame him out of life. That's pretty useful. He also has an Iron Beak Owl against an early Van Cleave. And I guess he will just drop his Ancient Watcher here since if he only drains life, he's going to have too many cards in his hand pre-turn 4. So he just needs to drop one minion and, well, he decides to go for that Ancient Watcher. And he has still the option to go for the Iron Beak Owl on his Watcher to, yeah, to kill, not to make it able to attack because... He has the big game hunter for for a potential big big Van Cleef play, and I guess Iron Beak Owl is the thing we're going to see here. Since you you, the thing you want to do against the uh, Maruka Rogue is just rush his face, and like if he needs to use all his spells to defend himself to get minions killed, he cannot use them to burn your face, and that's really important if he's. Wasting eviscerates for your minions. That's four damage less you're taking overall. Which is important, especially as Warlock. Yeah. No no real reason to use coin life tap here. Double backstab, so turn five can get interesting with all those backstabs. He's gonna draw a lot of cards, but oh he's just using one now. And what he wants to have is a turn 5 preparation, so he can go Auctioneer, Preparation, Conceal. If he's not getting it, well, he's going to wait with his Auctioneer for turn, turn 6. six. Yep. We might see a turn 5 Azure Drake, so that's got to be possible. And, well, end turn for Nimj. And, well, Carlos, turn 4, Twilight Drake incoming now. And also two Molten Giants in his hand. So if he drops extremely low, that's super annoying for Nimsh. But Nimsh knows that there is a potential of those Molten Giants. So he, I would expect him to wait, not burst him too low. So he cannot drop those Giants easily and taunt them up. But rather go for a turn 8, turn 9 combo with Leroy and those Shadow Stab, Cold Blood, Eviscerate combos. It looks super sad for Nimsh at the moment. There's a 4-5 and a 4-7 on the board and he cannot kill those. He could kill the 4-5 if he goes for backstab and deadly poison, for example, but that would really hurt. I guess he w he will just drop his Azur Drake and maybe backstab the 4-7 and would go down to 4-4. And if he trades with his 4-5 on the Azur Drake, next turn he could go for a Blade Flurry to clear the board. That's one possible move, or he just dropped the 4-4 and waits. <laughs> so, possible too. <laughs> and I think then he's just going to do it and wait. Yeah, the backstab is the one card you want to have in combination with your Auctioneer for the card draw. 
Oh, he really goes for the backstab. So now his his Drake is not able to trade. He mm. would need to trade with his 4-5. That's an okay move. And next turn he can... Even he has 6 mana, so he could go Deadly Poison, Fan of Knives, Blade Flurry. He can absolutely get rid of everything, yeah, everything. on the board. <laughs> but there is an Earthen Ring Farseer incoming. Oh, if he's gonna heal up his Twilight Drake, that would be nasty. But... Oh, no, no, rather get just... Uh, yeah, he could he could trade with the Watcher, then heal him up. Those would be 4-4. Four, four. But then... And there's no... Yeah, there is a way, because he gets to 3. Yeah, it wouldn't be that great. Yeah, actually. and then Fan that of Knives. would be Knives, horrible. Like, that, would be, that would be perfect move <laughs> in Carla's eyes, going for the trade and heal your minions up and have two 4-4s yeah. four on the board. But we see Nim's hand, so he's just going to go Fan of Knives, Deadly Poison, Blade Flurry, if Carlis is really doing his play. And I don't see any reason why he shouldn't do it. So it's it's the most likely play you're going to do, because it looks it looks the best. But it's going to be so annoying when it hits him next turn. And I wanted to say I don't see any I way... I Twilight, actually. Well, you could heal your Twilight up for 4-7, but like 4-1, you don't want to have it. You're just going to heal it up to 4-4. Four, four. And now the Nimsh strikes. He needs to invest a lot, though. He needs to invest a lot, but his three minions dead, and he deals six damage to the enemy's face while having a Leroy in his hand with a cold blood already. That's ten damage. Yeah, and an auctioneer plus conceal, so it looks pretty good for him. He just diminished the whole board Carlos had, and well, as we see in Carlos' hand, wh what does he want to do now? Well, drop down a mountain giant. <laughs> <laughs> he just top takes the mountain giant. Good job for Nims. Holding still a sap in his hand. If you don't remember, there's a sap in his hand. And I guess Carlos might life tap here, but he would already be down to 17. That's pretty risky to do the life tap. Plus Sun Fury. Still goes for it. And there's 10 damage for Nimj. With a Shadow Stab, it would be 16, 16 damage. Not enough, quite. But we will just see an Auctioneer Sap. In in my eyes, we would just Auctions, see an auction yeah, step. Of course, most obvious play. Oh, he could he could, he could uh, cold blood conceal as well, but that could, would be risky. That would be extremely risky if your enemy has. Well, what it if your enemy has a Leroy? You just wrecked. And it's gonna be eight fourteen plus Hellfire, seventeen damage. That wouldn't be enough, but you're just you're just risking it. And what do, what do you don't want to do? Risk it. But now he has a taunter against him. He has a mountain giant, 9-9, nine, nine, potentially. There's a second sap for Nimsh. He just needs to draw. Yeah, but he needs to draw it. Yeah, you say, well, but there's cold blood. So he can cold blood up his two, auctioneer two if he cards. wants. Yeah, he can, he can play an auctioneer and then draw two cards for every spell. So ne next turn, he the four cards to be drawn, maybe, plus preparation. So for every preparation, two more cards. I guess he can draw the rest of his decks if he gets the right <laughs> cards. I mean, there is eight mana, so there's an auctioneer, cold blood, two cards, preparation, two cards, for example, conceal, two cards, and then with with prep, then with a sap, another. So he can draw eight cards potentially, but out out of six cards, and he has well, what, what are we saying? Sixteen left, fifteen left. There is a potential to draw another sap. Oh, and that, that's a really, like, he, he gets only an 8 HP giant now. Yeah, so that, that was, I think that was a mistake. There's a the preparation we were talking about. Is he going for the double auctioneer, or? I, I would say it would be extremely funny. He's doing as much damage as possible to the face. Now, given gets an eviscerate. It's not enough. Well, uh, let's let's see. He gets a cold blood, and well, even with a shadow stab, he doesn't have enough. Oh, another preparation. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Nims, new Mino. What are you drawing here? So if he gets one shadow stab, it's it's enough. He can still eviscerate and maybe get the shadow stab. It's gonna eviscerate the face. 
going to Shadow Stab, or d there's a second Cold Blood, so two cards possible that would, would uh, do him good here. He can still conceal. <laughs> he, can, he can still conceal. There's just Leroy Conceal. There's no, a, a, he needs a, a Shadow Stab. Okay, he... Well, he's no, short he, he, one he damage. He has to play Conceal now. Oh, he just can't trade if he wants uh, to. Yeah, yeah, but he, if he gets the Shadow Stab, oh, yeah, no, yeah, he sure. wins. Nope. Oh, well, I would I would say Nims is really unlucky here with his draws. Just just got all the preparations he needed, but no, yeah, not not the stuff to win the game here. And in Carlos' hand, we're seeing two molten giants plus the defend of Argus incoming. <laughs> That's going to be a really rough what? time. What? What? <laughs> he couldn't deal the damage anymore. <laughs> At the, oh, I actually talked with both of them about it. It's it's a bug. That happened. Yeah, and it, it didn't play the card. Yeah, it didn't play the card. It's, it's a bug that happened. And as you see on uh, you Carlos, play them all. Yeah, as you see on Carlos' deck, and that bug happened. Like guys, that bug happens actually every time at the moment. If if Blizzard didn't fix it with their like with their small fixing thing, so there was a patch just a few times ago, and well, in theory, it is this is now sad for uh, Nims. Uh, since he has a disconnect, maybe maybe it's getting actually uh, it's revolving, but whoa, Barrett can still play, and they're chatting about it now. What's happening? I I, I didn't <laughs> even talk about them if they if they remade the match here, or if they just said Nimsh wins or Carlos wins. At the moment, I'm I'm. Uh, out of my mind. I think this is pretty much one for Carlos. This is pretty much one for Carlos. He can just drop his two molten giants and well dominate the game. <laughs> yeah, Nim Nimsh bucked himself out, but but Carlos is cannot play anything else too. So like he he wants <laughs> he wants to play something, but he cannot. And the big question is after his time limit went off. Can Nimsh play on or not? That would be funny. That would be some next level strategy. So he, he actually draws a card. <laughs> Boom! Two damage. Delayed. That's not... <laughs> <laughs> but but he can attack with one minion. So what? That's, that's overall bugged and Nimsh what? wins here. Um, what? Well... What? <laughs> that's a thing. Rhea? <laughs> Well, the thing is, if is if, if there would seriously? be a, if there would be a real disconnect, so Nimsh gets thrown out. Um, wow. That was that was entirely sad. I gotta remember that when I play my rogue. You gotta you gotta re like that you're bugging your enemy out. This guy Nimsh here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying Nimsh could have taken the win here since he yep. since he won and rule wise he could have. Well, I hope he's not going to break the system now again, Nimsh. Take cover here with your minions. In theory, Carlos won that game. We saw his hand. Two yeah. Molten Giants plus all those taunters. So that's sad for Carlos, but he might be able to do it again since he pulled it off once already. Exactly. Our Nimsh is going for more miracles. He pulled it off once, the miracle. <laughs> the miracle not, not, of not hacking. No, uh, he wasn't hacking, guys. It was just a bug. And that bug actually works with other champions in SI7. No. Like with all Battlecry minions that trigger and you just wait to run the time out, the same thing happens. It's not a bug, it's a feature. Yeah, I, I had some players testing that out. <laughs> now we're back into the game. Nimsh versus Carlos. It's 0 0 <laughs> at the moment. So no player won since they rematched here. And we see a coin as I seven agent from Nims just pulling out that early damage. And if your enemy is not having a soul fire or shadow bolt, if he even plays a shadow bolt, that's the correct thing to do here as a Mercury Rogue, since you you can lay down damage pre turn four. Well, and there's a soul fire, but he's not going to play it. No. He really wants to get that mountain giant out. And he can do so next turn. There's a second three three minion. Other ring Farsia gets played by Nimsh. And we saw that one again. But that was against the control warrior and the control warrior had the Fury War X. Yeah, Carlos doesn't have any Fury War Xs, but he has a mountain giant. 
Mountain Giant plus Soulfire could get could get hit rid of one minion here. Uh, he might think about just dropping down his Ancient Watcher and next turn go Shadow Flame, but then your Mountain Giant is getting delayed further and further. He's not using his Soul Fire here. That surprises me since, well, there's. It's, it could get annoying. He will lose it. Oh, he can he can just kill that mountain giant now. I was thinking about just go for their face and conceal your stuff. Just be super funny, but that's the better play for Nims here actually, since he really gets rid of that giant and yeah, and Hellfire would have killed the minions. Absolutely, there is no Hellfire for in Carlos at the moment, but he runs those. Yeah, he runs those, and he has Shadow Flame. So if he really wanted to, he could have cleared the board. An Ancient Watcher plus uh, Sun Fury Protectors is already annoying enough. And Urzan Ring Farseer, more and more heals for Carlos here. Yeah, and he can't afford to drop that low that early. I mean, he has one Molten Giant and he has Alex on his hand, which is good. But if you drop too low against a Miracle Rogue, you're in trouble. You need those taunters. And Nimsh top decks a backstab here once again. So that's what you want to do as a Nimsh. You're just going to <laughs> backstab everything with 3 HP away. 4-4 four, four Zutrake out with, well, Preparation Conceal, Blade Flurry, and Assassin's Blade. So he has Assassin's Blade and Blade Flurry roaming around. But Carlis, well, having a Twilight Drake. And that's quite a strong Twilight Drake. If he goes for Twilight Drake plus Soulfire, that brings him further ahead. Yeah, it's 4-9. But you, yeah. you definitely need to so fire here and hope for not Leroy or Alex Straza. Oh, and your Molten Giant, Giant going away. <laughs> and that's there's a stab for Nims. That's painful. You really want those Molten Giants. Next turn, Sun Fury Protector. That's going to be... Uh, not going to be... It's going to be annoying, but the sap, well, the sap does it. Which you, I think he should even Iron Beak first, the, the Watcher. Yeah, sure, just Iron Beak the Watcher to get, to get 8 damage off, and then Sun Fury Bows to have a taunting wall with, well, the potential to attack. And there's only one sap for Nim, so he can, he can get rid of one of those, like just sap the Twilight Drake, but there's still the taunted I, I, up. I would sap the Watcher. You tap the watcher. Yeah, because you would need to silence him again. Yeah, but you can you can kill five HP easier than nine HP. So you he would respawn with seven HP, or you would take four damage off the board. He could attack now the Twilight Drake. Go for Salinus Blade Fury makes no sense at all. <laughs> he's, he's pretty. He's pretty. There's the Sabin coming. He kind of needs to attack the Watcher and Blade Fury to get rid of all the stuff running around here. But it, it looks not good for Nimj at the moment. Oh. Well, he can he can always draw Leroy and just go pew pew since in his enemy's hand there are no more taunters, and he would bring him down to twelve. So next turn with a top deck Leroy, there could be a GG for Nims already. What? Without any SI7 bucks. No. He's down to 12 if he Blade Flurries. And True. kills. True. He, ki no he kind of uh, needs to attack a Blade Flurry. So that's the, the only thing he can do here. He might wait or he might want to Actually wait. down to 11. Yeah, since Salnus does one extra damage here on his blades. Like the annoying thing is with a deadly poison you would deal six damage and you didn't you wouldn't even need to attack his minion and that hurts. It's like don't use your blood flurry. You want to keep it for deadly poison, but he he no. needs to. Yep, he does. Brings him down to eleven. And there's well, there's only not so optimal stuff. The good thing is the Iron Peak Owl, so he can silence the Salnus for no more card draw on Nims. Ah, damn it. He wants to kill the Salnus. Because he could even just die to to Leroy Execute. Leroy Cold Blood. Doesn't even need to be Shadow Step. Doesn't even need to be Shadow Step. But there is one Shadow Step roaming around for Nims. Carlos, I got bad news for you. 
Or he just goes Leroy Hellfire himself, but that would bring him down to eight. That would be well, Leroy, Sh Leroy Shadow Flame, not Hellfire. I was like, well, why should he do Hellfire? So Leroy Shadow Flame brings him down to twelve, clears the board, but he's he's down to eleven. So much things from from Nimsh could kill him now. And there's Urzan Ring Farsia for Nimsh. Well, that's not one of the things. And I just have a <laughs> We we know those two minions from the beginning. The stupid thing, like he's he's most likely going to play those two. The the one annoying thing is now there's a hellfire roaming around for Carlos. So next turn he can just he can just kill those two minions again. He might drop down extremely low, but he can at least take back control. Or just go big game hunter shadow flame. There's some options. I would go with big game under Shadow Flame if I was him. Yeah, that's that's the safer way to survive here. Oh, that that hurts so much. That <laughs> Nimsh is having a quite awesome draw here for him. I guess I well, I would have just silenced the Salnus last turn. Really? Oh, well, he's he's just one damage. You deny the card draw, and I guess the extra card draw is dan more dangerous for you. Then uh, that one damage on the board. Like if he has Leroy, he, he you're already dead. There are so many <laughs> bonus cards you die from. He can deal 11 damage with his weapon too. But if you silence his Salnus, that's one card less he's drawing, and that would have been one SI7 or one Urzan Ring. I'm not sure. As a SI7, he drew second, so he would have just had the Urzan Ring by now. God, I was just thinking. Oh, he, two plays. Hellfire or big game on the shadow flame. Yeah, but he needs to he needs to clear the board. So there, those are the two plays he can do. Well, he could also go RMB Gal, uh, power overwhelming shadow flame, but that would hurt. <laughs> like to waste so many cards. Would be funny though. And he's down to 15. But if Nimsh is only drawing spells and no minions, it's gonna hurt him a lot. Since next turn there there is the potential of Alex Straza incoming and Alex Straza will just heal your enemy back up to Damn, 15. Dips. Well and with Alex Straza, power overwhelming and hellfire, that's gonna be GG if Carlos pulls that off. Yeah, but he needs another like this is gonna be Leroy or no Leroy. Yeah, Leroy or or a Sab. So a Sab could buy him another turn too. And it's Leroy! Leroy. Jenkins, he wins. <laughs> he wins. <laughs> good, good, good job here, Nims. <laughs> winning, winning without his broken SI7 agents. Well, he played two of those. Yeah, he played two of those. They were kind of broke without breaking the system this time, and <laughs> he, he wins the game here again. And apologies to Carlos here for Blizzard, from me too for Blizzard being stupid, making that back possible. So I would say Carlos would have won the first game. Nimsh wins, well, the second one here. So it's 1-0 for Nimsh at the moment. <laughs> Since he replayed, and that's really kind I of him. so bad if I was... And a hunter left still to play now. I would go for the hunter and rush the rogue. Uh, I, I agree with you there. We saw actually those freezing traps being useful. Yep. Still lost though. That's true. But it might be possible for him. Oh, full face hunter. So it's actually the full full face hunter with abusive Use sergeants, eagle even. horn boats and stuff. That's the better version against the Miracle Rogue since you can really rush him down. With the Sunshine Hunter, you're more in trouble. That's true. And misdirection. Nimsh has a, well, not so optimal hand with Azur Drake, Azur Drake, Gizgida, and Assassin's Blade. Until turn 5, he's going to take quite some damage. At least he should. But he gets a Farseer, which is really nice. He gets the minion and the heal, and can also clear all those, all those charge minions. And that's extremely useful for him now. We see a Wolf Rider incoming, and if Carlos decides to coin out a Wolf Rider, for example, that would be three damage to the face, but Nims could just kill the Wolf Rider with his weapon and heal himself up by three. So he might take three, uh, six damage overall, but in the end, it were just three damage from that poor minion. Do you think that's worth? Yes. No, 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 no. I mean, not for Nims. It's definitely oh, a great play for Nims. But like coining out the wolf rider instead of just saving the coin and yeah dealing two damage with with your steady shot. Uh, both things would be okay. 
I think. But you really want to get that minion out. And if your enemy is not having a shift, that Wolf Rider is going to stay for one turn or he's going to deal six damage overall. So I guess it was okay. And you really want to get out that damage. But it's always a discussion is it worth it? If you play your, like, if you coin out your Eagle Horn Bow, it's only three damage. And you could have done two with your passive. Solomon's gets played, which well, is good. The good but thing it's is also unleash the hounds. Yeah, two minions out. This is the one good thing, and there's a misdirection already hovering in Carlos' hand, so we could go for misdirection, steady shot, just wait a turn, and then drop some awesome stuff. Second eagle horn, leopard gnome. Mm. Well, misdirection, leopard gnome, maybe. Well, he decides where the buzzer to get more card draw, but he has already good cards in his hand. Uh, he didn't really <laughs> need the card draw. Down gets the Leoc. Which I is cool with Unleash the Hounds, of course. But yeah, he could just trade now. Yeah, but we're, we're kind of missing the play of rushing down Nimsh. So he missed already. Well, he didn't miss some damage. He just took some different decisions we, we wouldn't make. And is, well, there's a Leoc now on the board, and the Leoc is kind of completely useless. <laughs> until he gets a. Completely useless. Unless he, uh, he gets an unleash on that Leoc, but he's not going to survive for one turn. That's obvious. And, well, with, uh, he didn't play his misdirection, and with the misdirection, he could have dealt five damage next turn upcoming. And I guess I would have valued it higher. That would be better. Yeah, and he would also have, yeah, get one more charge on his weapon. And he knows it's his last weapon. Yeah, he just lost one of his bows. So I would have preferred the Leper Gnome pick instead of the Buzzard since he already had, he had two animal companions, one Unleash, a plus Abusive Sergeant, plus Kill Command. There were so many good cards in his hand and the Leper Gnome, two damage extra, plus, well, plus the two charges. I just, I'm, I'm guessing that Buzzard play might cost him a lot in the end might cost him the game. Absolutely. There's this trap now. The trap is good. The misdirection, well, it could get, it could deal three damage in Nim's face or four damage if he attacks his own auctioneer. If he goes with his earthen ring first, that could be three damage in his face or three damage on his auctioneer. So everything is okay there. Hand from Carlos is pretty good still. If he gets a Huffer, he can already deal 6 damage with Huffer. 8 damage in one turn with his uh, Steady Shot. What can Nims do? I mean, like, you don't really want to play an when you have 0 spells out. But he knows the potential that it gets killed is kind of low because the Hunter would rather go for his face. And I guess if Carlos had taken, like, the... Oh, you, you, we, we see his card draw. If he would have taken the Leper Gnome and put down the trap earlier, his hand would have been, wow, so much better. Like, I guess he he could deal so much damage. There's the second Leper Gnome. And there's Abusive. Well, two times Kill Command now. Nice. Are we quite, is he going to just nuke the face here for yeah, like no. four, seven damage now to the face? He's going to kill the Auctioneer. He's most likely going to kill the auctioneer, but he already could deal seven damage to the face. He has Leroy in his hand, so that's six more. There is so much damage potentially roaming around here. Mm, two more rounds. All right at the moment, I see Nimsh dying badly. Misdirection. Kaching. And now he gets finally the charge he needs. Nimsh drops down to 20. And wow, Next there. Round, down to 15. It's <coughs> double kill command hurts so much. He can already deal 5 damage with bow and steady shot. So that's quite a lot. But Nimsh already has a shadow step and another Urzan ring force here in his hand. So he can heal himself up by 6. We see Wolf Rider, not a beast. Well, still, that. Wh what do you think? Animal companion, kill command. No, I would have. I would have gone for Wolf Rider, Leopard Gnome, Steady Shot.
just deal those eight damage, and you can still go for kill commands for Zorn. You can just kill the Zordrag, yeah. Yeah, now you can kill the Zordrag, but in my opinion, if you don't win in two turns, like if you don't if you don't do do your damage now and then win next turn, you're getting killed yourself soonish. And he had Wizards Wolf Rider, Leopard Gnome, that would be Well Leroy Cold Blood, Leroy Execute would be enough already. Yeah, it would be enough already, so he but it would be already enough without the Azure Drake. So Leroy, Cold Blood like no. Leroy, Shadow Step, Cold Blood, Cold Blood would be enough. <laughs> Leroy, Shadow Step, Leroy, Cold Blood would be enough already. Yep, 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 true. So e either like go full full charge, full crazy mode now or Or die trying. Yes. Well, he he can kill that minion. That's good, and still drop his leper gnome and do his three damage. But I guess I would have just gone that complete nuke street down. I think that's fine because if he doesn't kill the orc, he loses. Well, he can uh, sap the orc. I don't see. It. Well, he could <laughs> he could sap a leper gnome and drop down two as I seven agents to get rid of the orc, uh, for example. <laughs> that would be manly. That <laughs> would be madness. <laughs> well, you kind of sapping the Leper Gnome is worth it. You just get rid of those uh, three damage or at least uh, four damage he deals when you attack him. At the moment, it's only two. And whoa, for Carlos, it's. Carlos will win next turn if, if Leoc survives. It's just 10, 12, 15, 17 damage. Exactly with Leoc. Yep. So Leoc needs to die. He gets stabbed. That's enough. He cannot play two Cobla, uh, two kill commands now in one turn. Up to 18 for Nimsh brings him down to 14. So now, now it looks good again for Nimsh. That's a close one. That's a really close one. It's an interesting one. Many decisions uh, questionable, I would say. But you, you could have played stuff different. You could have played stuff exactly like this. He could deal 5, 8. He could deal 10 damage now if he wants to. Bring him down to 8. If he well, plays his he Iron Beak... He could deal more. Yeah, so he could play his... He could deal 13 if he plays his Iron Beak Owl and double kill command. And then he's down to 5. And next turn he would win with Leroy. So maybe do the full damage. But as you said... If there is Leroy coming, he's dead. But if there is Leroy coming, he's anyways dead. And so I would say Carlos should just take the risk here. Maybe double kill command. Maybe only one and steady shot. So two options for him. He might get baited into kill commanding those guys. But mm. Well, that's actually... That's the safest play, but if there's Leroy... It's over anyways. Yeah. There's Leroy. Can, can Nimsh top deck that Leroy again? Oh, no, it's no, just... No, he can't. It's just a loot hoarder. But it's, it's three damage in the phase already again, and he can just drop Auctioneer plus loot hoarder. If, oh, if Carlos seven. had nuked the phase, it would be GG so for SI him. Seven. Yeah. Shadow step is I7, but that it's not likely. Because he wants to kill. Well, is it... Drops down to 10, 7. Yeah, he why draws not? A, he draws a card. He could also conceal, but he's... Nah, SI7. Yeah, he's going... Well, conceal, draw a card, or it just SI7. Brings him down to 9. Draws another card, so... And another shadow step. So ne next turn, again, two as I <laughs> two, two SI7s. SI and that's so, that's so sad. Uh, Carlos could have won the game here. He could have dealt so much damage and just won the game by now. <laughs> well, he he was feared of Leroy, yeah. But I would say he would be dead anyways. So he should have taken the risk, like the the do or die move here. Uh, now it's just die for him. He's down to <laughs> nine. <laughs> now it's die or die. Yeah, now it's die or die. He can go Leroy. Hmm. Leroy attack eleven damage, but explosive traps. Is that is that not gonna win him? Maximum damage he can deal? 12. 12. With Leoc and passive. Yep. And the weapon. Yeah, and the weapon. So that will be 12 damage and down to 14. And put down 
an explosive trap, but that wouldn't matter. Yeah. So it looks like Nimsh is going to take the win here once again, two times with a Murka Rogue. Trap is going down, steady shot, what? and in the face. Oh, it makes no difference at all. He, True. If he brings him down to that amount of HP now, he could win uh, next turn with whatever, or he just loses now. Uh, but with 9 HP, you're not going to survive. Even even with an explosive trap, Nimj is not going to play his Leroy. And then, uh, yeah. That was Timo, by the way, guys. He with did. the microphone he was drawing. Okay, never mind. You couldn't hear Timo. It was just us. And yeah, th the game looks pretty much over. There's the Cold Blood incoming for his minion, plus the SI7 agent. So GG here for Carlos. And Nimsh takes the win for Team Doga House. He can he can draw some cards now, get get even a Leroy additionally. Well, gets a deadly poison, has a sap, has a shadow stab. So so many ways he could win this game now. Well played by Nimsh. I guess Carlos could have won that, but and there's there's even there's even Leroy in the end. Sabs gets Leroy. <laughs> and he takes his time. So not not only he he drew everything he needs, he got Lyra in the end and he finished like a Murica Rogue should.